hello friends again in the continuity of the study of the osteology i'm going to define another bone of the upper limb and that is the ulna bone okay uh, in a previous session we discussed about the radius bone which was literally placed in the forearm that was toward the thumb and this time we are talking about a bone which is medially placed medially placed in the forearm and that is ulna that is ulnar bone again when we are talking about the ulna ulna articulates with the humerus and especially the trochlear part of the humerus this rounded part is the capitulum here the articulation of radius is there and a pulley like part this pulley like part is known as trochlea and this ulnar bone articulates with the trochlea as we can see the shelf like process this shelf like process is accepted in this fossa so this process is known as coronoid process and this is accepted in the coronoid fossa uh, uh, a beak like process which is accepted in the posterior aspect of fossa that is known as olecranon process and this is accepted in the olecranon fossa so olecranon fossa and the coronoid fossa in the uh, humerus similarly to uh, there is uh, the coronoid process of the ulna and this is the olecranon process of the ulna a very very interesting fact about the ulna is the upper end of this bone is not known as the head actually head of ulna is this one that is lower rounded part is known as head of the ulna reciprocal to the radius bone there is a process here and this is known as styloid process of ulna this is known as styloid process of the ulna okay this was a preliminary information regarding the ulna bone now this is the bone of the medial side of forearm so how to hold this one what are the conditions and protocol uh, which will, will which kept is this bone into anatomical position okay we hold this bone this is the upper end this should be hold above this is the styloid process this should be posterior inferior and olecranon process or this trochlear notch should be anteriorly directed okay upper and above olecranon notch this trochlear notch should be anteriorly directed and very very important thing is that there is a sharp border okay look at this bone this is the sharp border this is the sharp border other border are ill defined border only this border this sharp border this border is known as introsseous border uh, we can memorize that radial introsseous border it was again sharp because only and only thing which is attached on this these borders that is known as introsseous membrane was attached so this border is again sharp so if we are talking about the lateral bone that is radius introsseous border is toward the medial side and when we talking about the medial bone the introsseous border should be lateral side okay in this manner if i am holding this bone in this side okay the olecranon process is anteriorly directed this introsseous border is medially directed okay medially directed so that is not good so i am holding this bone in this hand in a supine position now introsseous border is laterally directed introsseous border is laterally directed styloid process is posterior inferiorly directed lower narrow end is a lower end and the trochlear notch is anteriorly directed in such a way this bone belongs to the right side if i am again if i am holding this bone like this this is if this is medially placed the introsseous border you can see this is the introsseous sharp border this is directed medially medial bone introsseous border laterally directed lateral bone introsseous border medially directed so this bone should be kept in such a way that introsseous border is laterally directed so this bone belongs to the right side or right forearm okay and they should be hold like this one now when we talk about a long bone is having three border three surfaces and two ends this is the upper end and you know there is a lower end lower end two special features one is the head of the ulna another styloid process which is posterior inferior directed 
now this upper end of the ulna having this olecranon process on a shelf like the shelf like coronoid process both forming a notch which is acceptable in trochlear process of the humerus so this is known as trochlear notch now individually we will talk about the we will talk about the different part when we talk about this this olecranon process in between my thumb and the index finger of right hand this is olecranon process and you can see this is the this is the ulnar notch to accept the head of the radius this should be directed laterally this should be directed laterally okay because this is toward the intraosseous border okay this is the olecranon process is having five sir four 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 five surfaces one is where my finger is resting that is upper surface this is the upper surface there is a sharp margin there is a rough area sharp margin and rough area this surface is upper surface now there is anterior surface anterior surface which merging with the superior surface of coronoid process and forming the trochlear process okay this having toward the notch this is having a lateral I, as i told you where the radial notch is the the ulnar notch is there for head of the radius where the intraosseous border is there this is the lateral surface this is the lateral surface of the olecranon process three superior anterior lateral similarly if i am moving toward more projected part of this oli coronoid process this is the medial surface medial surface of the olecranon process which is blending with the medial surface of coronoid process which is continue with the medial surface of the coronoid process okay so the medial surface the lateral surface anterior surface superior surface and one foremost triangular you can see here is a triangular posterior surface of the olecranon process five surfaces of the olecranon process is there now we are coming toward this self like projection there is upper surface and upper surface of this self like coronoid process is continue with the anterior surface of the olecranon fossa uh, process uh, which is forming the trochlear notch this is accepted this is this is articulating with the trochlea of the humerus okay so there is a superior surface of the olecranon sorry coronoid process there is anterior anterior surface there is anterior surface of this is anterior surface of the coronoid process and in the anterior surface of the coronoid process this is triangular okay i am marking this one this is triangular this is triangular and the most prominent part of this triangular anterior surface is known as ulnar tuberosity the most prominent part most which is little bit middly at the lower and middle part of this triangular zone which is known as ulnar tuberosity okay keep my word anterior surface of olecranon process is almost triangular and the lowest part of this triangle is a tuberosity this is known as ulnar tuberosity okay so anterior surface is clear superior surface is clear now now coming toward the lateral surface lateral surface having a notch look at this notch this is known as ulna, ulnar notch radial head is accepted here and at the margin like this like arch like way at the margin of this ulnar notch a, a band in a band like way a ligament it attached that ligament is known as annular ligament head is accepted annular ligament is a very very clinical aspect related to this ligament and this notch is pulled elbow kindly read the pulled elbow just below this there is a triangular zone this is the triangular zone and you can see the posterior aspect there is a lower this is the one posterior aspect this is a more prominent area which is known as supinator crest okay for the many a student supinator crest is a mystery you can see 
the anterior surface of the coronoid process also a triangular area and the lower medial part of this having the ulnar tuberosity and a lateral aspect this is again a triangular area just below the ulnar notch and the posterior aspect is more prominent which is supposed to be a supinator crest supinator crest is toward the lateral side supinator crest is toward the lateral side okay this is the lateral surface the medial surface is blending with the medial surface of the olecranon process okay the medial surface blending with the medial surface of the olecranon process so upper surface anterior surface the lateral surface and the supinator crest anterior surface and the ulnar tuberosity and medial surface is blending with the olecranon process of the medial surface of the olecranon process blend with the medial surface of the coronoid process this was four surfaces of the coronoid process and five surfaces of the olecranon process and entirely both are blending with each other or both are merging to form a notch that is known as trochlear notch okay this was the feature of upper end remember the ulnar tuberosity remember the ulnar notch the supinator crest and all these part now coming toward the rest of the bone rest of the bone okay when we talk upper end was described when we talk about the three border okay the well defined border this this border very very sharp border you can see this is the sharp border this border is the lateral border of ulna lateral border of ulna or intraosseous border this is known as intraosseous border this is very well demarcated this border is the intraosseous border similar to the radial uh, bone radial bone intraosseous border was medially directed its medial border is its intraosseous border is laterally directed lateral directed because this belongs to this hand keep this bone medially and intraosseous border laterally okay In, toward the intraosseous border we can see ulnar notch is there so ulnar notch is also defining the lateral aspect okay now this border is lateral border now anterior border is there how we are going to define the anterior border anterior border is not a well defined border so if we want to consider a uh, anterior border look at this ulnar tuberosity uh, below the middle finger below my middle finger i mark this one ulnar tuberosity we draw a line from this tuberosity to the anterior surface of the stylet process if i am a drawing if i am a drawing a line which is obliquely placed up to the stylet process look at this line which i draw from the ulnar tuberosity draw like this like this like this and reaching to the obliquely reaching anterior to the stylet process this is supposed to be from the ulnar tuberosity up to the anterior part of the stylet process this is supposed to be the anterior border of the ulna anterior border of the ulna now coming toward the posterior border look at this posterior surface of the ulna look at this posterior surface of ulna this is a triangular area this is the triangular area this is continue as a posterior border and continuous as a posterior border and the posterior border is running behind the styloid process they look at this eh? anterior aspect this is the posterior aspect from the triangular apex of the triangular part this is a posterior border which is again not well defined this is running on the posterior aspect of the styloid process so these ill defined borders are there one more thing on a posterior aspect a longitudinal ridge this is a longitudinal ridge which is dividing the posterior surface into medial and lateral that was the generalized feature one more thing this is the head of the ulna this is articulating with the notch of the lower aspect of the radius and there is a stylet process on a posterior aspect of this head there is a groove this groove is for extensor carpi ulnaris okay these are generalized feature of the radius again hold this bone anat in an anatomical position if i am holding this bone in an anatomical position a stylet process is posterior inferiorly intraosseous border is laterally the trochlear notch is anteriorly placed this bone is a medial bone of the forearm if i am holding this bone like this 
I can't hold on this side because interosseous border will be on a medial side. I am holding this bone this side and now the interosseous border is lateral side. This bone belongs to the right side. Okay. And this is the ulnar bone. Ulnar bone only clean in process M5 surface, the superior surface, anterior surface, the the uh, toward the L notch and the lateral surface and a medial surface. Okay, medial surface of this oligrand process continue with the medial surface of the coronoid process. Anterior surface of the coronoid process is a triangular rough area where the lowest projected part is known as ulnar tuberosity. Superior surface continue with the trochlear notch and the laterally there is a ulnar notch whose margin having an attachment of annular ligament and is articulate with the head of the radius and below there is a triangular zone this triangle is posteriorly hampered by a prominent process. This process is known as supinator crest, which give rise to a muscle that is known as supinator. Because this uh, and this muscle is going and attached in a such a way to the lateral aspect of the radial bone. These are generalized feature of the radius. Okay. Uh, next session, I will discuss about the attachment of the ulna.